And so this morning I woke up ready to lead worship, get ready for Praise Fest. Thank you. I take these out my ears. Get ready for Praise Fest. And since, you know, you have, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit, guys. If you understand about being saved, listening to the Holy Spirit is another level. Because you can be saved, we can be saved, going on with Jesus. But we have to recognize the place of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And for those of you who don't know, the Holy Spirit speaks. Holy Spirit speaks, but only those who have a receiver can receive the message. So let me just put it like this. So, so, so if my phone is dead, if my phone has no charge, no power going through it, Alicia can call me as much as she likes. She can say, Pastor Marcy, I've got a million dollars ready just to put in your bank. She can call me as much as she likes. But my phone is dead. I have a phone. I have a phone. But the channel for receiving is off. In this time, in this time when pastor is speaking about overflow, we cannot afford for our phones to be off. We cannot afford for our receivers to be down. Our phones have to be fully charged. And so this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. I am getting ready to do a new thing, but is your receiver on? We're expecting the Holy Spirit to do something. We're expecting the Holy Spirit to overflow. We're expecting the Holy Spirit to change lives. We're expecting the Holy Spirit to heal. But our receiver is off and God is saying, can you not perceive it? And if we don't have our phones on, we can't understand, we can't perceive it, we can't pick up what the Holy Spirit is saying and is doing, not only in your life. We have to get away from this belief that the Holy Spirit is only speaking to you for your edification to show what you can do. The Holy Spirit is on an assignment and the assignment is that which God has, which is to reconcile mankind, womankind to himself. It is not our own power personal assignment and so we have to listen to the Holy Spirit so this morning I'm coming to church getting ready to do worship thank you so much Vianna you're listening that's right getting ready to do worship and Pastor Clark yesterday so back up. Yesterday, I know that Pastor Rocha and Pastor Rocha is having his ordination today. I know that Pastor Rocha is being ordained and that Bishop Sean O'Neill is coming down to do the ordination. But yesterday, I kept saying to my husband, is Bishop here? And he says, I don't know. I'm sure he's going to come down. I said, and again, I kept saying, is Bishop here? He said, I don't know. I suppose he's going to drive down first thing in the morning and be here. And I kept saying, hmm. This morning, Bishop calls my husband and said, I'm stuck at the airport. I will not get down to Arlita in time for the ordination service. But if I do, I'm going to call you. And so guess what the next call was when I'm sitting here getting ready for worship? The next call was, Pastor Marcia, you got to bring the word this morning. This morning... <laughs> You have got to bring the word. And so I, I'm just relying on the power of the Holy Spirit to be open to the Holy Spirit. Do I have anybody else who's open to the Holy Spirit? Because this is not a cooked word. This has to come direct from heaven. Uh, this is not a word that I've poured over. This is a word that is going to be in my heart. A word that will encourage you this morning. God is getting 
ready to do a new thing. To turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew chapter 9. And verse 22, let's start from verse 18, Matthew chapter 9, verse 18. And Jesus was saying this, as Jesus was saying this, the leader of the synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died. But you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hands on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe. For, she thought, if I can just touch his robe. I will be healed. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, she, he said, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. I don't need people with dead faith right here. Ah, she's only asleep, but the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, however, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. The report of this miracle swept through the countryside. Let's say amen to the reading of God's word. Let's say amen, amen. And so we recognize that in this time of pandemic, there is the feeling that Jesus has taken his hands off. There is the feeling that God has not got his hands on this situation because people that we know, people who have been vaccinated, people who have not been vaccinated are getting sick and even worse, some are dying. Where Jairus is in a situation where he recognizes he's not even a disciple. He recognizes that in God there is power not only to save, but there is power to heal. And so the scriptures tell us that he comes to Jesus. But there is another issue going on. As people of God, we want to grab onto the faith that Jairus had. So, oh my God, my God. As people who know Jesus, we want to take a hold of the faith of what Jesus that. Jairus has because even though others were saying that she was sick unto death I have faith in Jesus who is able to heal even now while Jesus was going there was something else going on there was this woman who Jesus was not even aware of. How many of us may feel that God is not even aware of our situation? We have Jairus who Jesus is responding to immediately and then we have this woman who has been praying for 12 long years, uh, looking all over, going to different physicians. Jesus is not even aware of her condition and yet here is Jairus come straight up to God and say, will you do something? He's going with him and it seems unfair. Many of us want the faith of Jairus, but some of us are going to be the woman with the issue. How many of us have got issues? 
This issue speaks of a flow of blood, a flow of uncleanness, a, a flow so, so much so, menstrual flow, that she could not be in company, good or bad. Because the Levitical law dictated that if you are unclean, if you are an addict, if you have pornography problems, the law dictated that you wouldn't come near good public, pop, good people or bad people. That's what the law said. But I want to encourage somebody today, encourage somebody this morning, that it doesn't matter what your issue may be, you can come close to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what your habit may be. Doesn't matter what the world says. It may have cost, cast you off. The world may have given up on you. But you can come close to Jesus. When Jairus came, a whole crowd came with him. When the woman came, she was all by herself. Nobody even know, knew who she was. In, 19, in 2002, I was in Ghana, West Africa. I was a missionary in Africa for 10 years. And in 2002, we had a green truck, a four by four. You don't call them four by four, you call them front, front and back axle things that you can push them into. It's a pickup truck, but when you can push it into gear, what's that called? To take off-road. Is this four by four? You all know something. This is great. Yeah, so I was in this four by four pickup truck because, of course, a four by four is able to be all terrain, right? You can take a four by four anywhere, okay? And so on this particular day, it had been raining the day before. And so I'm in my four by four going to the store. And I decide that I'm going to go on this untarred, uncemented road because I'm in a four by four that is able to take any type of terrain. And I'm driving and on one side of the road, it's dry, muddy, sorry, it's dry. On the other side of the road, same road, but on one side it's dry, the other side, there is a big mass of water, a puddle. And so I'm in my four by four, right? Because a four by four can go through anything. And I decide that I'm not going to go on the part of the road that is dry. Why? What fun would that be? Why have a four by four if you can't go through the puddle and get out? So I'm smiling, going down the road, and it's going right through the puddle. I don't know how deep this puddle is. And so I drive into the puddle, and I get halfway through, and all I see is mud going up behind me. And the more I press my foot on the accelerator is the more I'm digging myself in. There are some times when the Lord is showing us an easy way, but because of our own gifts and because of our own talents and because we have so much confidence in ourselves, we decide we're going to take the hard way. And it's only when we get halfway through that we realize, God, help me, I'm stuck. And I'm pressing on the accelerator, not knowing that the more that I'm pressing, 
Not more, knowing that the more that in our terms we're looking to our own way and our own ways of doing things, that we are digging ourselves even deeper in the dirt. Not in the snow, in the dirt. There was a row of houses beside the road and when you are in trouble, you want to grasp onto any help that you can get. And there was this man sitting on his veranda, peeling an orange. He was watching me dig myself into the mud. And he continued to peel his orange. I was getting more and more conscious that I do not know what I'm going to do to get out of this. And this man was just sitting peeling and he was peeling this orange slowly. And he peeled the orange and then he began to dissect it peg by peg and put one peg in his mouth and he said, uh, but my window was down, he said to me, you're stuck. You have people who can see the situation, but they have nothing to add to it to help you get out. All they want to do is make a comment about where you shouldn't have gone through that road. Why did you go through the old road? Why did you go through the new, the, 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 the soft road? Why is it that you went? You don't need those people when you're in the mud. And so many of you are saying, why didn't you call Dr. Clark? Because if I call Dr. Clark, Dr. Clark is going to say to me, why did you go through? Why did you go through the mud? Pride takes over. And with the people that could possibly help us, we don't even want to go to them. The man sitting by the side of the road, eating his orange, said, so where are you from then? I said, I'm from London. He said, I have a cousin there. They live in Bromley, do you know, do you know them? <laughs> no. He continued to peel his orange, paying me no attention. From up the road, I saw two young men coming towards me, going about their own business. They were talking, laughing, and I, they were coming closer and closer to the truck. And they looked at me, and they looked at the truck, and they looked at me. And they went behind the truck, and one said to the other, you push, let's push her out. These guys rolled up their trouser legs, waded into the mud and said put turn the ignition and while we're pushing you press the accelerator I'm so excited that somebody's trying to help me that I press down the accelerator they just get covered in more mud they said stop 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 one of them goes off and gets two rocks and puts behind the wheel of the car. And then he said, okay, turn on the accent. What he was doing was trying to put together a sturdy surface to get me out of, the pro out of my problem. Hmm. 
There are times when we pray, we bring our petitions to God because we think if we pray and if we fast, that will be enough. And a lot of the time it is. So these men were making a foundation in order for me to get out of the mud. And they said, okay, turn the ignition on and press the accelerator. I turned the ignition on, pressed the accelerator, and the mud was still flying in the air. The young man came to me and said, Madam, move out of the driver's seat. I will drive you out. The young man got into the driver's seat and very slowly backed out of that muddy puddle and put me back on dry land. There are times when fasting and prayer is enough to lay the foundation, but do not put all of your confidence in your prayer. Do not put all of your confidence in your fasting. Oh my God. The, in Mark chapter 9, there is, we're told there that Jesus went up to the mountain and was transfigured. He had with him Elijah and Moses. And there were the disciples, Peter, James, and John. And they saw this great sight, Jesus being glorified. And then Mark tells us, then Jesus came down from the mountain. There are times when we're in glorious places where God has shown us great things, but then we have to come down from the mountain. And when he got to down the mountain, he, he, he comes across this commotion, this commotion because the disciples had been asked to cast out the demon out of this boy. And the Bible says they were not able. They did not have the power. Yet in Mark chapter 6, it's very clear that God, Jesus, gives these young men the authority to cast out demons. So what was happening here? They knew how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. They may have not done too much fasting because the Bible, Jesus says when the bridegroom is here, they may not need to fast as much. But I believe they knew what it was to fast. And they were with Jesus, for goodness sake. Jesus says to the Father, I, you are able to do anything if you just believe. Now, many of us believe that if we just believe, if we do found the foundation of prayer, if we do fasting, if we do the foundation of belief, then we got it. But the power is not in us. God is getting ready to do a new thing. But we have to recognize that it's not about your prayer. It's not about your fasting. It's not about your speaking in tongues. It's not even about your prophetic voice. It's about God getting ready to do a new thing in order that this world may be reconciled back to him. There are some things that only Jesus can do. There, I've said it. There are some things that only Jesus can do. There are some things that only Jesus can do. And we need to get back to basics which is to recognize that Jesus is Lord of Lords you can pray yes you can fast yes but God is the King of Kings and that all power and all authority is his there are times when we have to call upon the name of Vianney you didn't help me out oh she's gone that's why she didn't help me out but few of you got it Vian uh, Jesus we have to call upon the name of Jesus 
And we see Jairus calling on this name of Jesus. And we see this woman saying, if I can just touch the hem of his garment in my truck, I had to recognize that I did not have the ability to get myself out of the situation. It took somebody from outside who had the knowledge, who had the understanding of how to get a four by four truck out of a muddy puddle. There are some situations in your life that unless we ask Jesus to come in and take over the will, well, we're ready to give up our truck and say, Jesus, take the wheel take the wheel God take the wheel but what does that mean it means that we have to trust him I had to trust that these guys wouldn't just kidnap me and take me away we sometimes have to get to that place of desperation and this is where this woman was she had been sick for 12 years she had done everything she knew what to do she was now at a place of desperation and the Bible said that she heard that Jesus some of us are so preoccupied with our own situations and our own problems. And how are we going to get out? How are we going to take care of this? That we can't even hear Jesus. The receiver is down because we are so preoccupied. But in this season, God needs an army that is ready and attentive to the general that is ready and attentive to hear the captain of his host. That when he says, move, okay, God, I don't need a week to go. I'm going to just move. When he said, you need to pack up your things and get going, then we are already ready to move. So this woman has the faith that the power for my healing does not lie in the doctors. My healing does not lie even in myself. My healing lies in the man Christ Jesus. And Jesus says to her daughter, he claims her. <laughs> Jesus claimed her in that minute when everybody else had turned their faces away from her jesus claims her and i want to tell you this morning that jesus is claiming you jesus claims you as his child you may have gone far from him but you're still his child still his son still his daughter he says your faith your faith, your faith has made you whole. To my Christian brothers and sisters, the world is watching us. They're watching how we react to the situations that are around us. And their faith is based on our faith. The world is watching us. Okay, let me bring it closer to home. Your family members who do not know Jesus are watching you. And their faith in Jesus is based on your faith. In Mark chapter 9, the man said, I brought my child to your disciples and they were not able. What knocking of a faith does that take? It, because I, I, I came with my child thinking that you could do something for him and you couldn't do it. So our faith gets knocked. The world, your family members, your friends are basing their faith not in Jesus, the power of Jesus to change situation, they're basing it on you. 
if you believe Jesus can, if you speak about the miracles that Jesus has done in your life, they will begin to believe, okay, maybe, just maybe, there's something in this. But if we are speaking the same speak that they're speaking, that's good English right there, sorry, it's not. Then their faith will be just like ours. Do we have the faith, whether it be the faith of Jairus, that you are able to do it immediately at once? Or it's be the faith of the woman who says, I've got to go through this for 12 years before I have enough strength to believe that if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. It doesn't matter because you have the grace to endure both, whether immediate or 12. Whatever it is, it's your breath in my lungs. So I'll pour out my praise. I'll pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I'll pour out my praise to you only, God. God is getting ready to do a new thing it's getting ready to push you out of some puddles that you're in some difficult situations that sometimes are of your own making but he doesn't hold it against us he said I'll get in the driver's seat if only you would allow me to close your eyes it's your breath in my lungs so I pour out my praise, I pour out my praise, it's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise to you, only God. What are you going through today? What have you been enduring? Can you declare that, Lord, it hurts? It's difficult because God expects us to be truthful to him. We're not saying to pretend that the situation is not there because it is. We're not telling you to pretend that it doesn't exist. Jairus' daughter was really sick, not pretend sick. The woman really had an issue of blood. Your situations are so real right now, whatever they may be. Can you lift your faith in Jesus? Can you call on Jesus in this moment and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Can you extend your hand and in faith touch the hem of his garment this morning? You've tried. You know you've tried so many different means, so many different avenues. There are some things that only Jesus can do. Do you have faith enough in Jesus to believe that, yes, Lord, you can heal me. Yes, Lord, you can deal with my issue. Yes, Lord, you can dry up this blood. Yes, Lord, you can heal my son. Yes, Lord, you can take away this addiction. Yes, Lord, you can turn my eyes to you and help me to continue following after you. Yes, Lord, today I recognize that my strength alone is not enough. I can't just do the fasting and the prayer. I have to recognize that the power belongs to you. It's your breath, it's your breath. In, our lungs. in my lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. Depend on him for your very breath for your very life can you depend on him for that miracle right now that you need that miracle I want to pray for someone today 
pray for someone today. I want to pray for someone who knows Jesus, but is not quite sure if Jesus knows you. But if Jesus came up to you right now, he would say, you look familiar, but not quite sure that I know you. And you're saying, I know you. I know who you are. I know who you are. And Jesus is saying, mm, you, you used to speak to me. You used to have a relationship. So I, I'm remembering something. I'm speaking to that person today who wants to renew their relationship with Jesus Christ. So that any time Jesus sees you, he'll say, yeah, that's my son. Yes, that's my daughter. Is anybody like that to hear this morning? Just by the raising of your hands. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. The woman was able to go to Jesus because she heard. And this morning you have heard that Jesus is here and ready to bring you into his family. Call you son, call you daughter. And all the earth will shout your praise. And all the earth will shout your praise. Hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Let's all stand together, and all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Father, I bring your sons and your daughters before you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you are getting ready to do a new thing. Oh, my God, that you took your daughters and your sons out of some difficult situations. They have already crossed some Red Seas. They have already been in some deserts where they did not know where their next penny was coming from. They've already been, uh, their relatives have turned their backs on them. Oh God, 
Father, you have remained faithful. And despite all that they have been through, God, you are getting ready to do a new thing through them. Raise their faith, oh God, in you. Raise their faith in you. Raise their faith in you. God, I pray at this hour and today that they would recognize that you are Lord, you are King. All authority and all power belongs to you. And if you, they are your daughter, if they are your son, you are ready to move the host of heaven on their behalf. God, raise your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please your God. So would you raise faith in your sons and daughters today, God? Raise your level of faith. What do you need Jesus to do? Prayer team, will you come out? What do you need Jesus to do? Prayer team, will you come out? What do you need Jesus to do? Prayer team, will you come out? What do you need Jesus to do? The prayer team is going to be here. If you need specific prayer, what do you need Jesus to do? 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 He wants to break at the, the chains, he wants to break the bondages, he wants to break the habits, and he wants you to be free. Uh, these sons and daughters are here willing to pray with you. And so we want to see you in the next few hours at Praise Fest 2021. And so be blessed. Walk in the strength and in the power of Almighty God. To God be all the glory, praise and honor. God bless you. Have a great week.